Hey everyone, welcome to Craving Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Now in this video, I'm going to share my spoiler-free review of the upcoming Christmas-based slasher, It's a Wonderful Knife. Now this will be, of course, spoiler-free, so don't worry about having the movie ruined or spoiled in any way by watching this review. Now, the film hits theaters this Friday, November the 10th, and tickets are on sale right now online at all your local theater websites. So the question is whether or not It's a Wonderful Knife is a wonderful movie or not. Well, don't worry. I'm about to let you know my answer to this question and much more right now. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is Christopher Landon, the director of Scream 7, and you're watching Craven Something Scary. Now, just in time for the holiday season, we have the fun Christmas slasher, It's a Wonderful Knife. Now, it's written and produced by Michael Kennedy, directed by Tyler McIntyre, and it stars Joel McHale, Justin Long, Jane Whittup, and an ensemble cast of others. As I mentioned earlier, it opens in theaters this Friday, November the 10th. Now, just as we saw in the body swap film Freaky, starring Vince Vaughn, Writer and producer Michael Kennedy has yet again taken on a great film tradition, but this time it is the protagonist wishing they had never been born. So welcome to Angel Falls, the Christmas capital of the world. Right from the beginning of the movie, we're introduced to this seemingly perfect town that is carefully watched after by its beloved mayor, Henry Waters, played by the fantastic Justin Long. Now, there are even grandiose plans for the development of Waters Cove, a massive shopping, dining, and entertainment complex that is sure to bring in visitors from all over to spend their time and money in the town of Angel Falls. The only problem is not everyone is on board as one person is still not willing to sell their home, which would allow the project to move forward. Now, this is the catalyst for the insanity which ensues. Murders begin to happen at the hand of the angel killer. Now, I must say that the costume of the angel killer is, well, killer in my book. The white robe, white gloves, solid white mask, it may just be my most favorite looking killer since Ghostface. And coming from me, that is saying a lot. Now, among the murder victims is the death of Kara, played by Hannah Huggins, who is the best friend of our lead protagonist, Winnie, played by Jane Widdop. Now, after a few murders and some excellent chase scenes, Winnie is able to kill the angel killer and reveal their identity all in the first 16 minutes of the movie. Now, fast forward one year later, it's Christmas time again, but Winnie seems to be the only character who remembers what happened a year prior. While everyone seems to have moved on, including her father, David, played by Joel McHale, as if nothing happened, Winnie still wrestles with the emotions of losing her best friend and of her actions in killing the angel killer. Things finally reach a breaking point for Winnie and much like we saw in the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, we see Winnie suddenly seeing her wish that she had never been born come to pass. Now from this point forward, things get really crazy as she soon realizes that no one knows who she is, including her own family. 
Not only that, but things are not better in the town at all. In fact, they are even worse as the angel killer still exists, but is killing on average every couple of weeks. And the residents of Angel Falls are seemingly slipping under the control of what appears to be a much more sinister plan at work. It is up to Winnie to make the allies she needs to figure out what's really going on and determine who's behind the murderous events taking place in the town. Not only that, she has just 24 hours to figure things out and put a stop to it, or she will be stuck in this version of reality forever. Now, if I say any more specifics about the film, I'll be getting into spoiler territory, and I'm gonna stay far away from there. Now, writer-producer Michael Kennedy knows how to strike the balance of emotions between comedy, fear, and compassion. And director Tyler McIntyre did a great job of bringing the story to life on screen and getting the most from the cast members. And while I did really enjoy all of the cast performances, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be the performance of Justin Long as Mayor Waters. Every time he's on screen, I found myself smiling for one reason or another. Just loved how he played the character. He did it in the, in the way that it just needed to be done. And he continues to impress me, guys, in every movie I see him in. I also want to mention that Jane Witta performs strongly as the lead protagonist. And if she keeps up this trajectory, I would not be surprised to see her in the leading role of more films in the future. So in closing, I say this, if you're a fan of slasher films or Christmas horror movies in general, I definitely recommend this movie. It's a fun film that also reminds us to be careful what we wish for. No matter how bad things may be in your life at this moment, it truly can be worse. And rather than wishing it all away, just keep fighting the good fight and keep pressing forward one step at a time. Now, once again, It's a Wonderful Knife opens in theaters this Friday, November the 10th, and you can pre-order your tickets online right now at your favorite local cinema. So grab some friends and go see it, or hey, go solo. Either way, you're going to have a good time. All right, everyone, that is my spoiler-free review of It's a Wonderful Knife. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And for everyone else, please smash the thumbs up button on this video to help it reach even more folks on YouTube. Well, I'll be back soon with more horror movie content. And until next time, this is Craven Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Thanks for watching.